Okay, gang, we are doing it. Because <laughs> I will tell you that I did this whole um, thing already from the gym. And uh, then when I went to edit it, this one I'm doing live. I, I was supposed to do it live at the gym. I'm just closing this door so you're not all looking at an open window. And it's the bathroom, but that doesn't matter. It's more the light from the window. <laughs> but um, the, you know, the wireless sometimes slow at the gym. It wouldn't connect. So I was like, you know what? I just have to get it done because I missed it yesterday because I was traveling back from LA. So I was like, I'll just record it and then upload it. We'll be good. Then when I went to edit the upload, the sound was just... <laughs> so I won't tell you the really amusing story about how on my flight from LA into Toronto yesterday, the plane at one point went... Like straight up in the air for probably three straight seconds. And then... And then... Straight down for about three seconds. People were screaming. I did not, I just leaned back in my seat and closed my eyes and was like, this is it. I'm just, I'm not gonna scream about it. Like, like that's gonna help me. Um, and the flight attendant did say that she's never experienced uh, turbulence <laughs> like that. And she didn't think anybody, any of the other crew had experienced turbulence. One of the crew members was injured a little bit. Um, yeah, so it was like, well, that's never ever happened. Oh, and my battery is low. Excellent. I'm going to go fast. We're talking about the knee. <laughs> so I've already drawn all over my knee to show you. I did this live on the other video, but this will have to do. Um, so what we have is muscles and ligaments and bones and all that jazz. So let's just uh, begin at the very beginning, a very good place to start for those of you who get a little sound of music uh, thing there. But here's my patella. It's a bone. This is my tibial tubercle. It's also bone. This is my vastus lateralis, my vastus intermedius, my rectus femoris, which actually comes all the way up into my, into my hip bone. So like all the way up from here, down to here. This is my vastus medialis, and you can see the fibers are kind of oblique like that. So it's sort of the one of the quadricep muscles that's in a position to help keep your kneecap centered uh, and then there is a groove that it kind of rides in. So your, um, your thigh bones, there's not a bunch of them. Imagine there's only these two. <laughs> and then your kneecap kind of sits in a groove between the knuckles on your thigh bone. And that's where it's happy. If it gets pulled out to the outside, it gets squished. And like if you were squished, you wouldn't be happy either. So this one sort of helps keep our kneecap happy. Uh, if possible. And you can see how these are kind of all in a position to pull up or out a little bit, which again compounds that lateral glide. And I'll explain to you a little more why it's important for a goalie uh, to be aware of that. Then this is, so all these muscles, the connective tissue, the fascia, comes all together, it engulfs the kneecap, and they all attach down here. So really kind of one attachment. I mean, they all attach to the kneecap, but this is their, this is where they exert a lot of their force. So up here, this is called the patellar tendon, uh, excuse me, the quadriceps tendon. Down here, it's the patellar tendon. Then if we look at the ligaments, um, we'll start with the ones that you can kind of see. So this is my MCL here in blue, and this is my LCL in blue. So lateral collateral ligament, medial collateral ligament, and then I actually drew into my hamstrings coming in there because we're going to talk about ACL and PCL injuries. So ACL and the PCL are inside my knee. Let me kind of show you. So they're, they're deep inside, like right in the middle of my knee. Um, but they're kind of like a crisscross arrangement. So the ACL goes sort of from, let's just say simplify it, the back of the femur toward the front of the tibia, and it prevents, and it depends how you look at it, the femur gliding back relative to the tibia or the tibia gliding forward relative to the, to the femur. The PCL, again, let's say it goes from sort of toward the front of the femur towards the back of the tibia, and it prevents the, um, 
the femur from either gliding forward relative to the tibia or the tibia gliding back relative to the femur. So uh, basically, if this is my if this is my knee joint, my ACL prevents my tibia from going boop boop out, and my PCL prevents my femur from going boop boop out. So it sort of prevents almost like a dislocation of the knee. Um, the knee is designed to be a hinge, not a ball and socket joint. So our knee is designed to go like this, not to go like this. <laughs> and when you try to do that, um, you know, you can see how our muscles don't pull around corners, you know, so it's going to try to pull a straight line. So these muscles are going to be trying to pull my kneecap that way. My MCL is very, very strong. It's preventing my knee from, you know, bending this way and this way. So when I'm smashing down in here, I'm putting a lot of stress on that MCL. Sorry, my battery's low on my phone. So I'm gonna actually try and plug in because if, um, oh, and the cord is gonna be too short. <laughs> Live TV, ladies and gentlemen. Because if the battery dies and I have to reshoot this, I might cry. I won't cry. I didn't scream when the plane was crashing yesterday. I'm not gonna cry because my phone runs out of battery. But you know what I mean. It's just, I'll be like, I'll be like, like that. Oh God, it's still too short. Sorry people, just bear with me, bear with me. This time we got her. Now it's gonna be, you guys are gonna be like kind of looking up my nose the whole time, but that's okay, my nose is pretty clean. Pretty clean, I say. Not perfectly clean. And there's a light coming out of my head. Let's guess that. Okay. Where, now I'm like shadowy, I'm like a shadowy figure. Um, okay, so where was I? Yeah, so the knee is supposed to hinge like your finger. Uh, your, just like your knee, your finger doesn't bend this way or this way. When you see someone whose finger is bent like out here, like it looks like that, you know there's a problem. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's kind of the same type of thing. But we're goalies. And that's what we have to do. And there's going to be wear and tear on our hips. And there's going to be wear and tear on our knees because we're doing things that aren't sort of normal movements for our body. Just like a baseball pitcher is going to be adding a lot of wear and tear to their shoulder and their elbow, but it's what we do, right? Okay. Um, oh, and then there is, um, there are menisci. So menisci are like little, hello, little um, like almost circular discs, and they're like a kind of like a fibrous cartilage material. And what they do is they try to give some depth and some contour and a little bit of stability to the joint because the the plateau of the tibia is fairly flat. It has a little you know notch in it, but it's fairly flat really and then the femur is pretty big and it has those big knuckles but there isn't you know it's not like our hip joint that has like a, a good socket and a ball and it gets in there this is a little bit precarious and then the kneecap is kind of on there as a fulcrum you know as as we go so it is like it's amazing actually our knees last just as well as they do it really is um so the menisci they just sit on top and they give it some depth to the joint and a little bit of stability and a little more cushioning. So um, let's, let me just check my notes, see what I've got. Oh yeah, yeah. So what I get is a lot of emails from those of you that say, when I'm in RVH or when I go in my butterfly, the inside of my knee hurts. Um, and so what are some stretches I can do to stretch that out? The answer is nothing, nor should you. You know, if you, if you loosen up your knee so that it swings like this way, um, that's really, really bad. <laughs> um, so that would be like a totally unstable knee joint. Sorry, gang, I have to turn that light on again because we're just 
or just two in the back. Um, that's an unstable knee joint. But the way I can take the stress off my knees is by working on my hip internal rotation. So, you know, if I can get my hips so that I can rotate my femurs in, that's what gets my feet wider. It's not, I'm not bending my knee, you know, this way to get a wider butterfly flare, not at all. Your knees are pointing straight down. It's the hip internal rotation that gives you that flare. And we're nothing if we ain't got flare. Okay, let's talk about some injuries. Um, I also have a coaching call in 12 minutes with Pedro, so I'm going. Injuries. Two injuries that sound really, really bad, but they're just kind of like, yeah, you know, that happens. Patellofemoral pain syndrome. How awful is that? Like a syndrome. A pain syndrome, for goodness sakes. Um, here's what it means. It means that the... Um, that the structures, some of the structures across your knees, so, you know, maybe your rectus femoris and your other quadricep muscles, they might be tight or your vastus medialis might not be strong enough or smart enough. So your kneecap is either getting pulled a little laterally, a little bit out of its groove and the cartilage is getting squished and then that gets achy and sore. Or it could mean that just these muscles are so tight that they're really driving the kneecap, the patella, back onto the knuckles of the thigh bone. And that irritates it as well. Our inside our joints, we don't actually have uh, a blood supply inside our joints. We have what's called synovial fluid. So there's a joint capsule that's like a fibrous sock that goes around the joint. And inside that, that's synovial fluid. And synovial fluid, I'm going to try and put my head in front of the light. <laughs> synovial fluid bathes the cartilage and the meniscus, and that's sort of its lifeblood. So if we're squishing the cartilage and it's not sort of getting that movement, even like if you've ever been sitting in the car or sitting in a movie for a long time and you get up and your knees are kind of creaky, but then you get going and then they're totally fine. It's because that cartilage has been squished. It's been um, denied its nutrients, so it's it's sore. But then once we get it bathing again and it's all happy, all oh, nice synovial fluid. So we want we don't want to squish parts of it. So really, patellofemoral pain just means, you know, I have pain between my patella and my femur. It usually feels like an achy, sore feeling underneath. It's it's still uncomfortable. It's not nice at all, but. Um, you know, and you would still like go see your sport physiotherapist and figure out why are you getting that pain? Because there, there are some general reasons that I'll sort of share with you at the end, but there, you know, you want to make sure there isn't something else going on. The other one that sounds really bad that isn't so bad is Osgood Schlatter's disease. It's like, oh, now I've got a disease in my knee. <laughs> and it's in um, adolescent teenage athletes. Um, the good news is you outgrow it. So the cure is finish your growing, your growth plates close, you don't have that pain anymore. But what it is, is it, and it can be sore. I had it when I was a kid. I don't know if you can see, but my knees have fairly big bumps here. Some people have way, way bigger bumps than I have. But if we look at all these structures coming down and attaching right there, well, if you're an active kid, like, like a lot of you are, like I was, you know, and you're jumping and you're ramming around, well, that's yank, 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 yanking on this. The problem is when you're a kid, this is still sort of spongy bone. It hasn't solidified yet. It's not cortical bone until we stop growing and our growth plates close. So as these muscles are yank, 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 yanking, that bone gets irritated and it even gets sort of not this, not pulled off, but it gets pulled on and it adapts by sort of making like a bigger bump. So it almost gets elongated like that. And it, and it is sore. So when I was a kid and had it, the, they said, well, you need to stop playing sports for a year. So I did. <laughs> and then I went back to playing sports and it was sore anyway. So now what they say is, yeah, it sucks. It's going to be sore. Don't kneel on it. That's going to hurt more. You know, ice it before and after. Um, if it gets too sore, you know, take a day off or a couple days off to get it back under control. But the take home message is it isn't 
permanent damage to your knee joint. It's not something that's, you know, gonna, oh, well now I've, you know, I've ruined my knees because I played sports with that. Um, the other thing, ACL tears, usually for a hockey goalie, I mean, it can happen. You can just get in an awkward position or almost fall on yourself in an awkward position. A lot of times somebody falls on you or into you and pushes you into an awkward position. Um, so usually it's more of a, um, like a something weird trauma as opposed to like a soccer player. A soccer player, you know, might just be running for the ball and plant and pivot and then they tear their ACL because those hamstrings that I showed you attaching, you know, the, the quadriceps and the hamstrings aren't working together. So, you know, the quadriceps pull and they pull that tibia forward and that tears the ACL. If you tear your ACL, you typically will hear and others may hear and feel a pop. Uh, so that's what people describe. I felt a pop in my knee. And um, then it will, it will swell quite a bit and quite rapidly. So I can't remember the exact number, but my mentor, um, a guy named Dr. Peter Fowler, who did surgery on like Steve Eiserman, Eric Lindros, like he's a orthopedic surgeon who's very, very good at his craft. But he said, and I think it's like 80 to 90% of knees that have an acute hemarthrosis, which is like acute swelling after an injury, um, are ACL tears. So that one, if like anything, it's a, a, just like an ankle, we talked about the ankle, you can have grade one, two, or three sprains because there are ligaments involved. So it's a sprain, not a strain. Grade one is like, yeah, like basically like, yeah, I tweak something, but it's okay. Grade two is you've torn, actually torn some fibers. Um, there may be some dis, uh, disability, instability, but it's not completely torn. Grade three is it's completely torn. So if you have a completely torn ACL and you're going to continue playing hockey or, or uh, multi-directional sport, you're probably, seriously, you're probably gonna have that reconstructed. Uh, MCLs, again, usually it's somebody falling into you and driving your knee um, in, you know, in, in football and things like that. It's a guy that has a planted knee and then somebody hits them here and, and tears it. For you guys, it's often, you know, if your knee's outstretched and then somebody falls into it and that, that's another way you can tear your ACL too. So often in those mechanisms, you'll go through your MCL first then you'll tear your ACL and then you'll come over on this outside and pinch your lateral meniscus and, and often give it a little tear too. So, I mean, there are, yeah, there are strains. Thankfully that MCL is quite a strong uh, ligament, but um, you know, that's a bad, that's a bad injury for a goalie to have because there's so much force on that just with any kind of movement. With a meniscus injury, It'll often feel, the physio I worked with described it really well, like a hangnail. So if I catch it going this way, it's fine. But if I catch it, you know, going against the grain, it'll give me a start. So menisci, sometimes it'll be like, oh yeah, I think it's fine. But then you might, you know, just walk around a corner or something and it grabs you. Um, and again, sometimes those settle down. Physio can sometimes help. It depends where in the meniscus the tear is because the outer portion has a little bit of a blood supply. So sometimes it actually can heal the inner portion, not so much. So sometimes that thing will keep flipping up or sometimes a piece will get flipped and that'll be your knee get, get stuck. Like it, you can't straighten it all the way. Or if you try to, it just, you know, excruciatingly painful. And sometimes that requires some surgery to either just scope it and clean it out or um, if it's a serious tear and you're gonna continue as an athlete, they can sometimes suture it back together, which is a much longer rehab, but it saves you your meniscus, which is really important uh, element of your knee for maintaining your knee health over time. Um, in the olden days, they used to just, oh, just take it out. And then lots of people getting really early onset osteoarthritis. So they're like, oh, I guess, I guess you should have left that in there. <laughs> Um, so the secret to sparing your knees is in your hips, you know, keep your hips mobile. It's going to take wear and tear off your, um, off your, off your knees. And again, you're playing a sport that's hard on your knees and hips and ankles and back and everything. So 
let's do what we can to minimize it. Um, you're not normal. What you do is not normal. <laughs> so here are sort of my, um, my key three. Um, work your hip internal rotation. So we have lots of ways that we can do that. Um, let me see if you can see me here. So one of the ways is just, you know, lying with our feet a little, like hip width or a little wider, bringing our knees in together, not forcing them in together, just bringing them in to get a nice little stretch. Um, the other is, and this will help with the patellofemoral pain, it, it's always good to stretch your hip flex, or for you guys, typically you have tight hip flexors, so we want to stretch those hip flexors. But to really help the knee, what you want to do is make sure you're getting that two joint hip flexor, that rectus femoris that crosses your hip and your knee. So you do that by getting in a hip flexor stretch position and then bringing your heel towards your bum. Notice I'm cushioning my knee really nicely, otherwise this is pretty uncomfortable. And then the last thing really is working on your mechanics. So when you're in the gym, you know, make sure when you're squatting, you're not pinching your knees in. When you're jumping, you're not letting your knees pinch in. Um, that you're building strong glutes that can work with your quads so that again, squatting comes as much from your hips as your knees. It's not like squatting is here driving your knees forward because that's going to put tons and tons of pressure on your kneecap. So if I kind of was zeroing in just on stuff to help your knees, those are my key, um, my key three. And then I would still be working like my rotator cuff strength in my hip, even though I know rotator cuffs in your shoulder, but I just call it the hip. Um, working those stabilizers, um, you know, transitioning from double leg strength to single leg strength in the gym so that you're making those muscles smart and strong and stable. So, I feel like I just ran a marathon. Oh, I gotta go because I got my coaching call. I'll see you next time. Cheers.